Today I'm at Beckford's Tower. This is the graveyard next to the tower. This is in Bath, above Lansdowne in Bath. There's new houses which weren't there a couple of years ago. This is like the very, very posh bit of Bath. Um, well, one of one of several. I haven't actually been up here for a while. A beautiful sunny late November morning. Walk through the graveyard, talk to you a bit about Beckford. William Beckford was at one point the richest man in the world. I think a lot of his wealth came from owning plantations in the Caribbean, sugar, so yes he was involved in slavery. He's somebody who isn't much discussed in Bath these days, despite the fact that he wasn't just a rich man, he was a literary figure as well. He was around in the 18th century and he wrote the classic gothic novel Varthek which is his little red these days. This is his tower which was basically his library. He owned all this land going about for about a mile going downhill towards Bath and as you see it's absolutely magnificent and this sort of churchyard sprung up around it and Varthek is a slim gothic novel. Um, it's got some supernatural elements I seem to recall. I haven't read it for a very long time. It's about a mad Arab, a bit like Lovecraft's, you know, Abdul Alhazred or whatever it is. Um, and you know, it's sort of, um, <laughs> it's great fun from what I remember. And it was quite scandalous at the time. And of course it's full of sort of, you know, cliches about, um, you know, the evil of Middle Easterners, but you know, this was the 18th century. The tower is open to the public. I've never actually been in. I must go in at some point. But as you see, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a very, very atmospheric graveyard. So I'm going to go a bit closer and give you a better view. One of time to go in today, and I'm not sure it's open on a Sunday, but at some point I'll take a film inside the tower itself. In Bath the only person we ever hear about is Jane Austen of course. It's Jane Austen, Jane Austen, Jane Austen and Jane Austen. But you know we had other literary figures from the sort of classic period of the English novel. Fanny Burney lived in Bath for a while. Author of Evelina. And of course, more recently, people have been interested in the legacy of Mary Shelley when she lived in Bath when Frankenstein was being finished. And that's sort of come, kind of become the thing amongst the chattering classes of late. 
but usually it's Jane Austen, Jane Austen and Jane Austen. Of course he lived here for four years. Despite Beckford's unhappy association with the slave trade, I do think people should read Vartek because there's a lot of talk about Gothic novels, but I find more often than not people haven't read them. Things like Charles Maturin, Melmoth the Wanderer, Matthew Lewis is the Monk. These are things which people haven't read. People talk about the Gothic as if they know what it is. Very often, of course, they haven't read it. Mrs. Radcliffe, the Italian, those sort of things. The seminal stuff. I read them all myself a long time ago. Fairly tortuous things to read, if the truth be told. Not always fun. Very of their time, but obviously very influential. And we're coming up to the tower now. Which, as you see, is magnificent, as I keep saying. But it really is. I'll show you the base of the tower. And it's in this little secluded shady grove. Little squirrel in the tree there, you probably just miss him. But yeah, truly, truly magnificent. The cupola, it's not strictly a cupola, but the top, I'm not up enough on classical architectural terms, I'm afraid. Surmounted with gold there. Absolutely beautiful building. In fantastic setting. the gate and up close. I always think it's a shame that no horror films have been shot here, not that I know of anyway. There we go. Time for a walk alongside the tower. The video widow is prowling around here somewhere. A bit like the bluefer lady in Dracula. I'm going to try and find her. I'll show you a bit of the vista across Bath if I can. To watch the footing here because it's a little bit tangled amongst these gorgeous memorials. So many now with the names faded away. In the midst of time. The squirrel there in the background. As you can see it's absolutely beautiful. Typically we are in the eye of the sun. I do love churchyards, graveyards. Some people think they're just sad, but I don't. I think they're fantastic. They're strangely life-affirming. There is no life without a knowledge of death. Right, in this little island with a moat is Beckford's own grave. Marble, protected from the common dead as it were. Again, as Dracula would say. Of course, one of the benefits that nobody talks about Beckford in Bath these days is that, you know, there's no attempts to sort of like deface the tower or burn it down or any of that nonsense or, you know, have a plaque stuck up saying, you know, he was a terrible man, slavery, blah, blah, blah. You know, the past is the past. I mean, it's not always palatable. We shouldn't hide the facts. But we have to remember that people's moral standards were different. And of course, not everybody agreed with it. And, you know, it's, um, 
you, you can't rub out history you have to have to present it as it was in all its aspects because history is fact it's not opinions they say it's one by it's written by the winners but you know obviously the winners change over time what's important is that we stick to the facts what's knowable so if you're in Bath and you want to get out of town come up to Beckford's Tower it's serene historic and literary and as I say one day I'll take some video inside